the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Thursday, July 14th, 2022. The last full practice for the Hamilton Tiger Cats ahead of Saturday's game against the Ottawa Red Blacks. Louis Butko here from Tim Hortons Fields on another episode of Tie Cats today. Thanks for checking us out on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Coming up on today's show, we're going to hear from Coach Orlando Steinauer. We'll hear from linebacker Cam Kelly. And later on, we'll be joined by Coach Sal John Salavantis as we get his perspective on the Tie Cats ahead of Saturday's game. Keep in mind, Saturday's game, 5 o'clock kickoff here at the Donut Box. And a big shout-out to our very own Luke Tasker, who will be the alumni of distinction. And as such, he will be signing autographs down in the uh, South Plaza. As it's our first ever South Plaza Saturday at Tim Hortons Field. He'll be alongside uh, Mike Daly is going to be there as well. Brandon Stewart. So lots of uh, former teammates of Luke Tasker here to celebrate him as the alumni of distinction for Saturday's game. And speaking of Luke, to get you set for Saturday's game, you catch a brand new episode of Tie Cats this week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. And uh, just a technical note, as we had some technical issues on our episode of Speaking with the Enemy, so that'll be dropping tomorrow. So just if you're looking for my conversation with AJ Jakobic to get you set for tomorrow's game, uh, that'll be available tomorrow on the Tie Cats audio Network. Uh, no news and notes to tell you about, so let's get right into it. Let's hear from the head coach of the Tie Cats. Here is Orlando Steinauer speaking after practice, and I asked him how he measures a successful week of practice as they were coming off the bye week going into Saturday's game. Here's what he had to say. I think it's different every week. I think the things that you emphasize in your meetings, things that you emphasize on the tape, uh, you just want to see that type of improvement out on the field. Uh, I found over time that you know, I've been a part of great practice weeks, and we've found a way to not win, and I've been part of weeks where you thought that we don't have a chance, and we go out and play our best ball. Um, I, my biggest thing and our biggest thing is we're not going to leave anything to chance. We're going to aim to do the best we can each and every time, so you, we don't try, really gauge it. We, there are certain aspects of practice where we might be working on down and distance. We might be working on uh, placement of our punts and kickoffs. And those are the types of things that you want to see positive. And very rare uh, is it that every single period of every practice goes exactly according to plan. Yeah, like I said, they, they, you execute a plan. Right? You don't, there's no meter. You don't judge it. So if I said good, you, then your next question would be, what does good mean? Like you can, keep, you can keep, keep drilling. We went in, we put the work in, we're prepared, and now we're ready for the game. It's the next game. But the only people that brings up 0-4 are everybody from the outside. Because that's what it is. You know, we've uh, unfortunately earned that. But we don't talk about that, right? That's not the fo- what, how, what is focusing on that do for anybody? And I'm not suggesting that you're saying anybody's focusing on it. We know what it is. And we'll continue to answer those questions until we win. But uh, if we spend our time looking backwards, we'll never move forward. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not you know, to be honest with you, what we do here is what we do. You know, it's a, it's a very fair question. And, you know, I think it's more of a perspective. Uh, some may call it a philosophy. And, you know, yeah, I have been part of places where maybe the atmosphere, the environment, or the, or the culture uh, wasn't built for sustainable winning or wasn't built for turbulence or adversity. Um, and, you know, the, you're, it's better to ask everybody that's involved than the person that's in charge because the – when you talk about this season, now you're going to get me going off on a tangent, right? But when you're talking about leadership, it always starts at the top, but it takes life from the bottom. So the other people would always obviously be better to ask. Don't know what they're going to give us. You don't know every week. You prepare for what you see on tape, and absolutely, absolutely we feel prepared. And it's not about the coaches being prepared. You know, it's, it's up to the individuals that make the team. And then after that, once you're prepared, then you got to go play free. you got to play fast. You know, we definitely got to be physical. And at the end of the day, you got to find a way to have one more point than the other football team. That is the head coach and president of football operations of the Ticats, Orlando Steinauer. One other piece of sound from practice. And just as a reminder, you can go to Ticats.ca, as always, to catch the full scrums. Uh, but we had a chance to catch up with Cameron Kelly, the second-year linebacker 
for the tie cats a couple of things discussed we talked about the new hash marks we talked about adjustments from year one to year two but we started just by asking the general consensus of how this team's feeling despite their record right now here's what he had to say um, just go for it um you know we're just trying to get better you know and you know just get as many wins as possible you know despite what our previous you know our, our record is right now we know that uh, we're just trying to keep going forward and just keep getting better. Um, I mean, nothing really has changed other than the fact that everybody's a little bit more locked in. Um, you know, we were locked in before, you know, things just didn't turn in our way. So uh, as opposed to trying to just change everything up, you know, we're just trying to just pay attention to the details a little bit more. Uh, for me, I just feel like it's gotten a little bit slower um, and me getting closer with my teammates and, you know, just starting to learn not only just our defense, but the game a little bit more. It's just uh, helped me out a lot. Um, we just got to focus back on the details, you know, focus back to our foundation, you know, figure out what the call is, you know, get yourself aligned, uh, you know, and just do your job and then believe it and then make it happen. I noticed a little change, not, nothing too drastic. Um, just the fact that, you know, the boundary is a little bit more hot now because um, it's more space over there. And uh, honestly, that's probably the only thing that I've really noticed. And the fact that, like, you know, my landmark when I'm dropping, because I know a lot of uh, offenses like to use the hashes as, like, landmarks, you know. So um, for me, I know that now it's not usually on the hash. It's four yards outside the hash because they still kind of use the old hash. So um, just little stuff like that. And that is Ticats linebacker Cam Kelly as we caught up with him after practice today. Ticats 0-4, Red Blacks 0-4. Something's got to give heading into Saturday's game. And to discuss that further, we bring in Ticats audio network analyst and friend of the show, John Salavantis. Coach Sal, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it as always. And uh, let's put on your coaching hat here. A team just got back from a bye week. They're 0-4, still looking for their first win. As a coach, what are you looking for at practice this week? Well, it, it would go back to what you did during the uh, time off. The bye week for the coaches is a time for self-examination and, and uh, self-study uh, of their team. Now you come off of that uh, week, and the first thing you do, Louie, is you take and you show those people People, this is a football. This is what we're here for. This is what we start with. And when you're on offense, you protect that ball. And when you're on defense, you take that ball away from the other team. And that's how we get our first win. Once we've got our first win, we can get on a roll and go the rest of the season. Now, you mentioned a couple of things there that I want to get into. And uh, one of them is protecting the football. And Dane Evans obviously has has struggled with that to start the season with the interceptions and the fumbles lost. What's your specific advice for him and how he can fix this problem he's had through the first month of the season? Well, I think you got to stay within yourself. I, I think he's trying to do a little bit too much. You know, when you have a, a an offensive line that's not protecting you, uh, you get into a mode where you think, I've got to do this myself. I've got to take it on my own shoulders, and he's not ready for that yet. He will be in time, but right now he can't carry this team by himself. So he needs to really relax, trust his O-line. When the O-line breaks down, don't be afraid to throw the ball away. He did that in the last time uh, they played. <clears throat> throw the ball away, get the ball out of your hands, don't take the sacks, and, and in such a way you're protecting the ball because you're not throwing it to your opponent. You mentioned the offensive line, Colin Kelly looks like he'll be back at left tackle. And it looks like they're getting some reinforcements with Alex Fontana back practicing this week. He was a guy the Ticats really liked. They went after and got him uh, this off season, despite not playing uh, in 2020, uh, 2021, excuse me. Um, how important is it to get this offensive line figured out before everything else, whether that's the run game, whether that's Dane, before everything else starts to follow? Well, it goes back to putting the right people in the right positions on the field and then sticking with them 
and, and making them better uh, in that fashion. You know, Louis, the, the East is wide open. Uh, when you look at it, the Ticats really right now, starting with this game this week, uh, can determine their own fate. Uh, in the next eight games, they will play seven times against uh, Eastern opponents. And four of those times will be against Toronto, culminating with the Labor Day game, which will be on September 2nd. So you've got every opportunity to, to solidify your own line Get yourself in a, in a position to win the East and, and bring yourself to a place where you're going to get into the playoffs. So really, the, it goes back to putting the right people in the right positions and then staying with it. You can't keep mixing things up uh, with inexperienced players. You can do it with experienced players, i.e., if, if you're in Winnipeg and you got that old line, someone goes down, there's another guy right there ready to go. Uh, we're not in that position in Hamilton right now. We're still scrambling to find the right people. Can you put it into perspective what it is like for Colin Kelly, who played right tackle, who's played mostly right tackle, to try and come in here to, into Hamilton and play left tackle? Your experience as an O-line coach, how, how difficult of a position is that for, for Colin Kelly? It should not be that difficult. Everybody tries to make too much of it. You know, it, it's which hand you're putting on the ground, your right hand if you're on the right side, the left hand if you're on the left. With the tackles, it doesn't matter. They're standing up anyways. They're always in a two-point stance. I think the footwork is what you have to work on uh, constantly in practice as an O-line. And, and if you work on your footwork, get yourself in the right position, get your hands going in the right places, I, I think everything can work out. So it's not extremely difficult it's more or less you know a mindset something you mentioned off the top is the Ticats need to turn the ball over less and create more turnovers on defense do you feel that this defense has been lacking that big play that we've been used to seeing the last few years from this club well absolutely I mean I don't know where we stand right now I don't have the stats in front of me uh as to the uh, the turnover ratio but, uh, you know, you've got to be able to take the ball away and give your offense right field position, correct field position. You know, and, and really, uh, although the Ticats have been playing a lot of bend, don't break type defense, I think it's time to step up and, and get some man-to-man -man covers and, and get some takeaways from, uh, from that secondary. I was talking to someone but, here. But, Louis, Louis but go back to the D-line. The D-line is not putting enough pressure on the quarterback to make these things happen. We need to get extreme pressure on the quarterback and not let him escape from the pocket where he can extend plays and put the pressure on the defensive backs. Yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, and again, that's a spot on the football field that because of injuries or trying to find that Ja'Garrett Davis replacement on that one side – uh, they haven't been able to find that consistency I think they've been looking for. Uh, the kicking game was a big topic of discussion this week, bringing in Canadian punter John Ryan and uh, a coach saying it sounds like Seth Small is going to go uh, in place of Domagala, so they're going to flip the ratio on the kicking position. What are you expecting to see from John Ryan, uh, a seasoned vet of both sides of the border? What are you, what are you expecting to see from uh, 35 here? Well, I'll go back to what Coach Obilovich always said, uh, better is better. And John Ryan is better. And, and consequently, being a veteran that he is, you know, uh, you can expect good things from him. Uh, I assume he was in great position or great shape uh, when they uh, offered him the position uh, as a kicker so or a punter. So uh, let's see what happens. It's all in, uh, you know, up to Saturday night. Now, there's one thing I was talking to somebody in the Ticats offices here who said, you, you, you don't ask him to be a leader. You don't expect him to come in and start saying all the right things. But a guy who played 10 years, 12 years in the NFL, uh, you know, who's won, super, who's won a Super Bowl, what are you hoping that younger players pick up from a, a veteran presence like John Ryan in the locker room? Well, it, it would go down to John Ryan's work ethic. If John Ryan continues to have the work ethic that got him those years in, in both leagues, uh, then I think, you know, he's become a leader in, in that uh, respect. 
So the younger players will look to him to see, is he out on the field just uh, fooling around with the football or is he actually uh, working on his craft and, and getting things better? So, you know, to me, leadership is not yeah, yeah, rah, rah. It, it's, uh, you know, I'm doing my job. Uh, you go do yours. It's unfortunate we won't get to see Jeremiah Masoli back here at Tim Hortons Field, but we will see, uh, you know, uh, Lorenzo Malden the fourth, who's having a great start to the season. We will see Darius Soraka. We'll see Jalen Acklin. This Ottawa Red Blacks team still looking for their first win as well, but definitely improved from last season. What are you expecting to see from, uh, from the Sean Burke, Paul Lapolice team? Well, I, I think, number one, they will be very disappointed in the way that they lost Mazzoli. And I think they will rally around whomever they start at quarterback and try to make him successful uh, right off the bat. And the guys you mentioned, Ackland and Sirocco, et cetera, uh, those are players we never should have lost. We, you know, those were uh, darn good football players, and it's a shame they're playing against us, but uh, let's give them the best effort we got as a tie cat. Yeah, and two teams desperate for a win. How does that play into it? Both teams know that they don't want to go 0-5. So how how desperate do you think these football teams are going to be come Saturday? Well, I don't think desperation plays into it as much as, you know, mindset again. Uh, you know, you, you've had a bye week. Uh, the the Red Blacks had a very tough week. I, I think it's uh, it's time for all phases of this game to step up for the Tiger Cats and start defending your home field. Well, it should be a great one. Coach, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it as always. Well, you're more than welcome, Louis. See you again. Awesome. And my thanks to uh, Coach Sal, John Salavantis, for joining me today. Of course, an analyst here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. And speaking of the Tie Cats Audio Network, uh, it was so great to see in person today Tracy Lynn. Of course, you know her for her game day features. Uh, you know her from Hot Country 94.7. But uh, it was great to see her down here in person, seeing her smiling face. And uh, that's that's probably the best thing uh, about this season so far is getting to see all those familiar faces around the uh, CFL that you, you used to see and get to see again. But the 0-4, something's got to change. And hopefully the Ticats can change that on Saturday. Just a reminder, tickets available, ticats.ca. They start as low as 15 bucks for the Stelco North End. Some great family packs that include four pack of tickets, a $25 Ticats All Access card. That starts at just $99. And a lot of great other offers, including $10 kids tickets for the with the purchase of a, a full-priced adult ticket. And you're going to want to buy down here because it's South Plaza Saturday at Tim Hortons Field, which will feature autographs from our alumni of distinction, our very own Luke Tasker. Speaking of Luke, brand new episode of the Coach O Show available on the Tie Cats Audio Network, and you can catch him tomorrow on Tie Cats this week. You can catch us tomorrow on Tie Cats today, right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. From all of us here, I'm Louis Butko, hoping you have a great day. Tie Cats today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.